Hey guys, welcome back to another Lord Bane video. Um, today I want to discuss the uh, Set 13 Datacron set that just been released, and if we have time, I'll quickly run over um, some of the questions that were issued in my latest videos regarding um, maybe if this works, if my Thrawn counter works against Omicrons, or um, can the fifth spot instead of Shore Trooper be something else? I am going to cover that in this video as well. So let's hop straight into it and we're on the forum page here and we're going to look at um, basically the stats first and then we'll move on into each level. And I will say guys, this is definitely going to be a good uh, season for Thrawn, definitely. Um, so we start off with our stats here. Um, we have critical avoidance, which you know is useful in some cases. Critical damage, that's always welcome. All right, so this will be probably a <laughs> an issue for most here. So remember back in the day when we had dodge. <laughs> well, basically this is the special damage side of it. So you've got dodge, which affects the physical damage, and deflection. Um, deals with a special damage, so um, let's. It's not going to affect people in battles very much, but it'll be. I can, off the top of my head, I can think of one battle that might affect some, which will be the Lord Vader battle with uh, bounty hunters, which will um, definitely. It will definitely affect it because. Oh, a bit loud. Hopefully not. Um, Fennec is based off um, special damage, so if Lord of Outer teams have high deflection, your Fennec might be deflected all the time. So that could definitely um, change the way we fight Lord Vaders if they have high deflection. Maybe Bounty Hunters might fall off the viable counter ladder, so to speak. Um, resistance, we honest, I don't honestly don't really care. Accuracy, I don't really care. Tenacity, very, very, <laughs> how convenient, eh? I, I put out this Thrawn video against Jabba, and I'm like, mate, if this next Datacron is good for Empire, has good some good stats that are work, workable, mate, I can imagine this being absolute god tier. So, we've got here in stats, Tenacity, which, if you guys watched my uh, Thrawn uh, videos, I'll leave a link if I'm able to, um, Tenacity is incredibly important, and the more tenacity we can we can get, the more chance of resisting thermals, which means more turn meter for us. So, if you guys want to try out my Thrawn counter, pick up definitely a high tenacity stat line. Try and re-roll for it. I know many people aren't into the re-rolls, but for some who are out there trying to take advantage of this, definitely get the tenacity rolls up there. Um, otherwise, it's the same for every, like, tier in stats, and, yeah, basically, guys, I think deflection and tenacity and critical damage will be probably the top three stats you want to try and aim for. Um, let's hide that now and go to alignment. Now, they're basically all the same for light side and dark side. There's probably only two differences, and I'll get to that to the end. So, we're going to start off with the second one on dark side. Whenever allies gain a buff, they recover 2% health and protection. Now, this could be great for my Thrawn counter, it can be great for Bounty Hunters, it can be great for Kenobi, it can be great for multiple teams out there who get so many buffs, even Bad Batch is another one that gets lots of buff. Mandalorians, more buffs, stuff like that. So, you can definitely take advantage of that. Um, I'm trying to lean this video towards what will help my Thrawn counter. Gaining buffs is something very common on that team and the more recovery we've got will help us survive those thermals. Alright, our next one there is whenever an ally inflicts a debuff they gain 2% critical chance stacking. Now, honestly, 2% not going to do much for you and it only lasts 3 turns. I'm not so keen about this one, probably on the lower side of the uh, level 3s. Our next one here, we've got, at the beginning of their turn, allies have a 25% chance to dispel all debuffs on themselves. Um, this can be great with my Thrawn team, maybe if we get a shock, 
or something like that on our characters. It's not needed necessarily because we do have our outmaneuver ability that dispels that. Um, it could be nice for a number of other teams. I haven't really looked through what it would help um, more teams than others. Uh, what's our next one here? Whenever an ally inflicts a debuff on an enemy, they deal damage to that enemy equal to 2% of that enemy's max health. So, I think for Lord Vader lovers out there, this level 3 is probably the one you want. Whenever allies inflict a debuff on an enemy, they deal damage to that enemy, enemy equal to 2% of that enemy's max health. So, Lord Vader on his Unshackled Emotions ability, I think he does four stacks of dots and then days, so that's five per character. So five twos are ten, so that's going to be two percent. Uh, sorry, ten percent for every character. And Lord Vader applies the dots just by taking a turn. So Lord Vader's got to constantly dealing damage to the enemy, which I think is going to be quite useful. For Thrawn purposes, this could be nice because um, IC and Gar both inflict debuffs on their basic. So a little bit faster way to chip through them might be handy, but I think the next, the uh, top first one is going to be the most important here, which is the first time each dark side ally reaches 90, 70 or 50% health, inflict doubt on a random enemy that doesn't already have it, which cannot be dispelled or prevented. So Important here, it cannot be dispelled or prevented, so no resisting and no dispelling. So this definitely will be nice for our Thrawn counter, for Lord Vader's, for pretty much any dark side team I could imagine. I wouldn't say Malgus needs it because he already gets the doubt, but maybe you want an undispellable um, doubt, which I understand. Um, I definitely think this is probably the most powerful of them, but I also definitely think that 2% Max health damage is also quite good. Um, and it's basically the same thing for the light sides here. The only slight difference is the percentages. And uh, for, the light, for the first one, it says, for the first time each light side ally reaches 75%, 50%, or 25%. Uh, health grant them protection up for two turns, which cannot be dispelled or prevented. So similar to what Jedi Master Kenobi does, this will be nice for pretty much any light side team, I could imagine. And that also, I think that other good one is that 2% max health damage is going to be quite good. Um, so, guys, for this next set, definitely try and focus on getting those 2% max healths and that uh, doubt one. I think they're probably going to be the best for you. Uh, we'll go to factions now. Thank goodness it's Empire because I was hoping and praying that we're going to get it. Um, Feel free, guys, to read over the Mandalorians. I think they're kind of a niche um, faction at the moment. Not many people have Bo-Katan. And the Mandalorians that we do have, the Maul team. The Maul team, some people do use, but not many have the optimal uh, characters to use with that team. Having said that, um, the stacking offense is great for them. The cooldown reduction is also great. No revives is not a real big deal because you're probably going to blow the team through anyway and it, they won't have a chance to revive. Um, bonus turn below 50%, 100% health is nice, but really in a mall, mall team, if you're not going first to get mall off, that bonus turn probably won't get you out of the rut you're in because if you're... Not taking turns, the enemy, like, let's say a bad batch is just going to roll over you anyway. So I wouldn't be too keen on that one. i definitely try and get that stacking offense one I think would be the best uh, for the Mandalorians. Rebel Fighters, I'm just going to have a quick read through them now. Heal over time, maybe nice for Saul Guerrero, because I know he likes to take care of heal over times. Um, I will say here, whenever allies grant a buff to another ally... That ally gains 10% turn meter. This will be great for Mon Mothma teams. Even for Radis teams, that turn meter gain could definitely cause timeout issues for maybe a Wampa solo against um, Mon Mothma. Definitely, I would say that's probably... A... Obviously, if Wampa can land the days, maybe he can get around it. But it could definitely, I reckon, pose a, a timeout risk. 
Uh, and Radis probably, he'd take advantage of that easily. Um, cooldown reduce, protection over time, 10% off. Offense stacking, yeah, they're all kind of good here, but I'd, that 10% turn meter gain on buffs and heal over times will probably be the two optimal ones here. Yeah, definitely. Um, so let's move on to the fun part that I've been waiting for here. Um, Empire. Let's start off with the first one and work our way down. Um, whenever an enemy loses turn meter, allies gain protection up for two turns. Whenever an ally loses protection up, they gain 10% turn meter. Um, I can think of a few things that this would be good up, good against. So, for example, my Thrawn team against Jabba. The enemy loses turn meter when they're fractured. So, let's say we fracture Chrysanthemum and we use a special ability on any of our characters. Uh, Chrysanthemum's losing constant turn meter, which gives us heaps of protection up. Which is based off health, unfortunately. But still, it's survivability and when an ally loses that protection up so maybe embo buff dispels it or um i don't know they just get through it we're gaining heaps more turn meter so i could definitely see this level six being quite useful on our thrawn battle just to keep us alive a bit more and keep giving us turns um Lord Vader, I don't know if this worked great with him because he can't have his turn meter manipulated. Um, I can't really think of any more that come to my head at the moment, but I'm sure there's plenty more Empire teams. Maybe Emperor Palpatine and um, Mara Jade with the um, staggers. They get that small protection up and more turn meter they get. So maybe Starkiller might become a bit more viable against Ray with this new set. Uh, well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, next one here. At the end of the turn, allies gain defense up, pen defense penetration up, and offense up for one turn. Again, I think this is great for our Thrawn battle. Getting more buffs, offense up, and defense penetration up will just help us, help us blitz through the Jabba team. Having said that, it's only for one turn, and also um, Embo can dispel it. So... It's probably niche, but I will say it will be good for maybe Imperial Troopers. More buffs at the end of the turn means more turn meter. So in a normal Imperial Trooper team, I think this would be quite good. Um, the next one we got here, at the start of their first turn, allies gain offense equal to 400% of their current defense until the end of the battle. Then they lose 50% de defense until the end of the battle. So I will say... I think this is one we just had, but for a different faction. Um, I think it's great. Um, if I'm reading this correctly, at the start of their first turn, this will only la this uh, this effect only lasts for their first turn. But then it says until the end of the battle. So I'm not really sure here if the allies gain offense equal to 400% for just their first turn, or they gain it for the rest of the battle. The wording here is a little bit confusing and I'm not quite sure if we gain it for the whole battle or just for the first turn. So if it's the whole battle, goodness, that would be great with uh, Thrawn Super Commando to blitz through the Jabba team like, <laughs> like butter. It'd be like easy. Um, Lord Vader as well, he would be able to just smash everyone. 400% offense, mate. He would be like just one-shotting, I think, teams. Um, even Imperial Troopers could take advantage of this because defense is not really going to matter for us because we're going to take so many turns and if they do hit us we're probably going to lose uh, let's look at our next one here whenever allies target another ally with an ability during their turn they both gain 5% defense max health max protection and offense until the end of the battle this is great for again Thrawn because we're going to be targeting people with uh, Thrawn the Terminus swap probably with Piet more often than not so he'll be gaining that offense and uh, survivability and then Piet marking down Super Commando will be giving Super Commando more offense and more survivability which is both great things um, and our last one here probably our least best I think will be when we critically hit an enemy during their turn that ally gains 10% offense stacking for two turns so it's not bad but definitely take advantage of the other ones there will be a lot better 
Um, all right, let's close this one down and we'll quickly look at the level nine. I'm just going to skip the ones that probably people don't have. So Bo-Katan, I'm skipping. Even though, all right, I will say, if you do have Bo-Katan, this is going to be the season for you because this level nine is just unbelievable. It's like an instant kill almost. So I couldn't believe it when I was reading it. Um, IG Grogu, I'm not going to read it. Paz, I'm not going to read it. Um, for those with Mando Besco armor, I think you should take advantage of this because 20% more damage per stack of Whistling Bird it will, is substantial. And maybe in a um, Dash Rendar team, this might actually have a good impact. I know most people in Kyber, though, use their Besco and Mando as a safety blanket, so to speak, when they're using Bounty Hunters against Lord Vader. So, Take advantage of it if you want, maybe in the lower um, ranks of uh, Grand Arena, this might work a little bit better for you. Mandalorian level 9, it's nice but not needed. Chirrut, maybe this works for Saw Gerrera, I don't really have Saw Gerrera so I can't really say. Bodhi Rook, it's a lot of words so must do something but no one has Bodhi Rook upgraded anyway. Um, Jin Esso, I think this will be good just to slap on a Rogue One team. It's just it's just stacking offense it looks like it will be helpful but to for what Rogue One does at the moment they don't really need more this maybe against Reva but honestly I think you don't really have to grind for this one it's not going to be game changing I believe Lando Biggs I'm just going to skip that Dr. Moff Gideon I think this will be great because you're summoning a sixth member Dark Trooper um, which I believe is just broken as well. That literally just saves you having to use this Dark Trooper itself. Um, just crazy. That would, if you do have Dark Trooper Moff Gideon, I think that's definitely one worth getting. Probe Droid, it's niche. No one hasn't really upgraded unless you've got him for operations in territory battles. Death Trooper. Death Trooper usually belongs with Dark Trooper Moff Gideon, so... Don't worry about his level 9, worry about Moff Gideon's. Unless in an item team you want to take advantage of this, um, which I guess is okay, but it's just a revive and item revives them anyway. Um, Shaw Trooper. Funny, funny, funny that, eh? Hey? This would be great, a great level 9 for our Thrawn team, reflecting 20% damage dealt onto the attacker as true damage, which can't be evaded. This will be this will be great against Jabba because they're constantly hitting that taunt and dealing damage to themselves. We're just going to melt through this Jabba team like nothing. I will. This is definitely one I will be trying to get, and I'll get probably a few of them to see if the level six changes anything with the battle makes it easier. But guys, I'm so excited to try this uh, new set with my Thrawn team. I believe. Jabba will become a non-issue with this team. I, uh, I'm certain of it. Um, we've got this director Kranich one here. They spelled D-I-R for some reason. <laughs> I'm not really sure why. Um, but it's a niche thing and no one's going to use it because no one has Kranich upgraded just except for Sith, uh, Sith Eternal upgrades. But Kranich is kind of a useless character. You don't use him. And I wouldn't worry about using him. So, guys, um, that's just quickly... Going over set 13, I probably missed a heap of stuff that you guys wanted to hear, but I wanted to try and show you how this set is going to greatly impact this Thrawn vs Jabba counter I've uh, came up with at the moment. So I'm really excited on how this is going to work, and I will shoot out videos about how this works as soon as I get my hands on them. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think it'll be great. I can't wait. So. Um, I'm going to quickly keep going here and we'll talk about, um, we'll talk about the Super Commando team. Um, I'm, I will say this is my, uh, free to play account, so there is a, f not all my teams are upgraded, so just dismiss the relics and the gear and whatnot. Um, on my normal account I have most of them at Relic 7 with God mods on them, so don't look at this and say, oh, how did he do this against Joa? I didn't. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to read you some abilities and just go over some Omicrons and uh, what Vs and Range Trooper bring to the table if you don't have Short Trooper up upgraded. Um, let me just get my notes up here. Alright. 
All right, so if we're going to attempt this um, team against a vanilla Jabba team with Omicrons, so I'm going to start talking about the Omicrons first and then we'll go, come back to Veers and range. Um, I would suggest, if, so if you're fighting a, the, a vanilla Jabba with any of the Omicrons, just for now, until we get our set 13, try not to do it against the level 6 or the level 9 boost data crime. It's a little bit too risky, and it's heaps of RNG goes into winning that battle. So, if you're going against a Java team with Omicrons, don't even attempt it if they have the good data crime. Um, but definitely use it against a normal Java team, that's fine. Alright, let... I had a few questions saying, will this work in Grand Arena? So, obviously, the only Grand Arena change will be Chrysanthemum's Omicron, which is Champion of the Fighting Pits. Now, what does it actually offer? So, it says, at the start of the battle, Chrysanthemum gains 40% max protection. Alright, let's stop there for a second. I don't think that is going to matter too much, because... If we have our offense ramping with uh, Emperor's Trap, and maybe we have the buffs on basic for in set 12, uh, set, sorry, set 11, or the, even the stacking offense on set uh, 12, I don't think this protection boost is gonna be a big deal because you're gonna melt through him pretty quickly anyway. And we're not focusing on Chrysanthemum for the battle anyway. We are quickly putting a buff immunity on him and then fracturing him. So I don't think this will matter in the grand scheme of things. Maybe it might cause a timeout issue if you don't have the relics or the correct mods on it. But if you've got everything fine-tuned in, I don't think this is a big issue. Um, let's move on here. While he is active, all enemies have minus 30% potency. Now, this will matter. Um, this will create a bit of a problem when we try to apply maybe days with Piet and also buff immunity with um, ISE. So, and we need that buff immunity to get around the taunt. So it's quite crucial that we do make sure we have as much potency as we can get. So I can definitely see that affecting the team. Some things that we can do to maybe minimize its effect is swap out our tenacity cross on ISC for a potency cross. Um, obviously, if you do do that, you need to make sure you have good tenacity secondaries on that or a good tenacity stat on a data crime to make up for that tenacity loss. Um, but, yeah, I think that's probably the only way we're going to take advantage of that because there's no potency stats on data crimes this next season. Um, and because there's tenacity there, I think we could definitely swap to a potency cross, that's fine. Um, so it's not really a problem, this first paragraph here. Um, this second part here, if all L's were Huckertel, which they are, Chrysanthemum is immune to ability block, which is not a issue because we can't apply ability block anyway. Cooldown increases, not a problem because we don't have cooldown increases and won't affect the battle. Um, this one here, when the ally leader slot falls below 50% health, so, when Java falls below 50% health, Chris Santon's going to taunt, but he won't because we will have him fractured with buff immunity. So, we basically neglect that. Um, the protection recovery, I'm not sure if he gets that, even if he doesn't taunt, which will basically just... Um, won't really affect the outcome, because if we're at the Jabba and Chris Santon stage, we're pretty much golden, as long as they don't have uh, contracts. So, I think Chris Santon's Omicron will not change the outcome with Thrawn. Um, I will have to do some testing with this. This next coming Grand Arena season, I'll post a video up if I can get some battle recordings of it. But I fear most of them are going to have the level 9's data, boost datacron, so it'll be kind of hard to get a good uh, answer on what it will be. So you'll probably have to wait till I get that set 13. So. Um, Alright guys, I think this Omicron will not change the Thrawn battle. Um, don't try it though with the level 9 anyway. If maybe it's a weak Datacron, I would attempt it, yeah. I think it will be a bit of a cakewalk, we'll see. <laughs>
All right, we're going to move on to, we'll come back to Lando. We're going to do Embo first. So Territory War is quite, it's not a big deal so much anymore, but my guild definitely takes it quite seriously. Um, this Territory War Omicron is quite nasty, I will say, and it will definitely cause some problems with our Thrawn counter. Um, let's talk about it. Um, once we get around the Chrysantin Taunt, so Fracture Buff Immunity, and we get Bruce Layer down, if we get to that part, and we're still alive, we've got to take care of Embo straight away, because he's going to cause quite a few problems. Um, so if we do kill Embo, this um, Omicron basically goes away, and the battle returns to normal. Um, Alright, let's start off reading it. Bounty Hunter allies gain 40% max protection. Alright, so right there is similar to Chrysanthemum, but for everyone. It's more bulk, which means it's going to take longer to get through them, possible time at risk. So, I could see this probably causing a bit of an issue, but at the grand scheme of things, if we've got enough offense, I think we should be okay. Um, at the end of Embo's turn, Bounty Honda allies recover protection equal to 25% of Embo's max health, doubled for Embo. So, again, this will be an issue because this recovery is going to just stall us in trying to get these characters down. So, this is why it's crucial to get rid of Embo so we don't have that issue. And, um, yeah, it's just another time at risk as well. And if we can't get characters down, they're going to kill us. So, uh, definitely an issue there. Another one is, while Embo has protection, all bounty hunters gain 30% defense and 5% turn meter when a bounty hunter ally receives damage while debuffed. Whew, that's a mouthful. So, when we are attacking debuffed bounty hunters, they're going to receive turn meter, which is bad. So, basically, this is the level 6 of the boost datacron. Turn meter is very bad because... They're going to get more turns, and they get contract quicker, which basically ruins us. So, the one way we can kind of deal with this is days on Piet. And to get days, we need to have good potency. So, I would suggest a potency cross on Piet instead of a tenacity might be worth it. Um, but obviously, if you can't get, if you can't um, compensate for the tenacity loss you might just have to gamble it. But I definitely think Embo's Omicron will pose quite a threat when you're going against a Jabba. Definitely don't attempt this with uh, the Dece, the level 9 boost Datacron until we get set 13. Um, Lando, he's probably kind of the least impactful one. And I wouldn't worry too much about it, but I'll just talk about it anyway. Um, I believe it's on this one, yep. Deep cover basically increases their potency and defense penetration and speed. Which, more speed means more turns, which means close, quicker chance to get to contract. Uh, potency is annoying, but not a big deal because we can resist that. Um, which gives us more turn meter. Defense penetration could be scary against the thermals, but... If you have enough uh, regen and maybe protection, you might be able to survive it. We'll see how we go. Um, otherwise, guys, there's not really too much to go with uh, Lando here. And I if it was just Lando Omicron with no level 9, I probably would attempt it. It could be fine. Um, again, I don't really have any data to show you what the difference is. But as soon as I do, I will send it out. Alright, I'm going to quickly wrap this video up. Um, I had a few comments on if we could uh, swap in Veers or Range Trooper instead of Shore Trooper. Now, there's something I have considered, and the reason why I opted for Shore Trooper is a few, a few reasons. One, Shore Trooper is a tank, and he does offer quite good stats, and I think in his stand guard ability here, so he's a pre-taunt, which is great. Whenever another allied Empire unit uses a special ability and Shore Trooper is taunting, they gain extra turn meter. This turn meter game might... You might miss it, and it is quite useful. 
Granted, Short Tripper only taunts for Rabbi a turn or so because Embo quickly dispels it. It's definitely turn meter that we do want. <clears throat> His content, uh, constant cooldown refreshes as well is great. His recovery for the team is great. Crit hit immunity is great. And his retort, just great. What can I say? Um, so that's what we're trying to... If we give up Shaw Trooper, that's what we're giving up. Is what we replace it with going to be better or worse than what we already have? So this is what the problem is with Veers. So we're going to start off... Um, what do we got here? Alright, Veers. What is the pros for having Veers? He can call Piet to the assist with his uh, Ruthless Assault, which is good because that means if we have Imperial Super Commando marked, he's going to get called to assist with Gar, and we're going to deal true damage, which is great and all, but we have a cooldown of 4, and if we get ability blocked or our cooldowns get increased, we can't use it, and it takes forever to get around to doing this ability again. So it is really a one trick kind of opportunity. When we use it, it might be great for the opportunity, but really, it, it's the only real ability that he's got that brings anything to the table. Um, ability blocks that he can land on this could come in handy, but again, Java has a, a cleanse, so it might not even stick. And you need good potency on him to make it even work. So, it's handy, but situational. Speed up on the basic is great. And gives it to a red Imperial Trooper ally, so <clears throat> Piet will get it. Both, it, it is great, but really, speed up is probably just going to get dispelled by Ember anyway. Not great, to be honest. Um, what, what... Does Veers now have an issue with compared to Shore Trooper? He doesn't have a taunt, which means our team is exposed to multiple hits from everyone. So they can quickly gun down Piet, they can quickly gun down IC, or they can quickly gun down anyone they want, which is not great. <laughs> there's no recovery with Veers, and there's no extra turn mid again. So something that Shore Trooper offers, like I showed you, Viz cannot bring to the table. And guys, I definitely think this is a downgrade to what you get with Short Trooper, but if you only have this guy and you don't have anything to do with him, chuck him in there. He will do a couple things for you, but definitely, guys, as soon as you get that sword, Short Trooper to Relics, slap him in. Um, I'll quickly talk about Range Trooper before we head here. He has good assisting potential with power and numbers. Um, he has a 50% chance to call another Imperial Trooper to the assist, so that's Piet, and if Piet assists, that means IC and Gar will assist as well. So, situational, it's a coin flip though, so if you don't land it, it's a waste. A literal waste of a character. The 70% tenacity boost just for himself is nice, but if it's not for the whole team, not great, to be honest. Um, his steady ability grants retribution to Piet, which is great because that basically guarantees Piet's counters, which again gets IC and Gar to assist. So, you know, it's great, but again, cool down on three, and it's going to be dispelled anyway. I wouldn't be too hot on this. The protection um, recovery, protection up, is great for the team, but again, it's just going to be dispelled. Not love, not great, not great, but it's something, definitely. Um, and uh, again, so what's his kit compared to Shaw's like? Again, we don't have a taunt, leaving our uh, team exposed. He's a bit slow and he's a bit clunky, just because he's slow, he can't really keep up. And his recovery and terminated gains are minimal. Definitely, guys, these two characters. They can fit into the team, but they do take away the full potential without Shaw Trooper. I firmly believe Shaw Trooper is the way to go here. Um, I did do a quick test with Storm Trooper, but I know people want to use Storm Trooper for maybe Iden or even um, Dark Trooper off Gideon. But I think Storm Trooper could be potentially nice with the Termeter. 
um, removal while he's taunting, but it's kind of uh, short lived because he can these taunt can be dispelled. So um, where is it here? Um, so when he's taunting and he's attacked while he's taunting, he removes ten percent torment from each enemy, um, which is good. But again, his taunt can just be um, dispelled and it's kind of minimal impact. Um, so guys, I definitely believe Short Trigger is the way to go here. I will try and find a better substitute guys, but you you have a tight, tight squad. It can only be Empire, really. It, Mandalorian just won't fit in here. It has to be Empire and... All the other Empire characters seem to be taken at the moment, so I think Shore Trooper, guys, is the best way to go, and anything else is kind of a downgrade from what you can fully expect from the team. Hopefully, guys, that was good good for you to uh, see what we got from Set 13 and maybe a few things with the Omicrons and the team compositions. Sorry for the long video, but um, I think that needed to go out there. And I do appreciate, guys, you watching these videos. Um, I can't believe how many views I've gotten for the past few videos. I'm very grateful. All right, guys, I'm going to end it there. Thank you, and I'll see you on my next one.